Welcome back to those of you following our tutorial series. This is part two, first steps. In this one we're going to cover sleeping arrangements, the basics of cooking, farming, and uh, storage. So let's get to it. Our people have landed. I lucked in. None of them have cryo sickness, which I'm pleased about. And we also lucked in and got a walk. Wargs are great hardy creatures, but they're hard to train, so I'm not going to worry about the training for now. We'll deal with that later. First thing, where your people land, there will be the same number of weapons as your people, so I'm going to quickly let them equip them since they're nearby. You can select a person and right-click a weapon and uh, say equip to equip that weapon. Carrying a weapon doesn't impede their normal work function, so I tend to make sure most of my people are armed, just in case. Next thing, we, uh, space bar will pause so that you can have a look around your map. We're going to have a little look around. I've chosen a mountainous land here, and I, I like this as a fun way to play sometimes, as I'll dig a base into this area here. and. As you uncover, mine out some of this uh, mountain, you'll find little hidden rooms or little hidden protective grassy groves, uh, things that, little treats to find as you're going along. I kind of like that as a hidden adventure. So this looks like a pretty good place to start my base as I have this nice big room here that's uh, going to be great for sleeping quarters straight off. I have a geyser here later for my long-term power needs and a geyser over here as well. Geothermal is one of the best powers in the game. But that is further down the track. For now, we're going to focus on starting the bedrooms. So the first thing is this room here. Now, because we didn't build these walls, even though we can use them, we don't actually own them and there's this weird claim flag here. Now, the easiest way to claim a room is actually to go to Orders and Claim so that you can bulk select areas and claim all of it. Now it'll react like normal walls that we can put power conduits and everything else through. Under Structure, we have the choices of doors and walls. Now, if you click that once, you can see the different materials you can make them out of. Silver we need for trading, steel we need, uh, we have to dig out, and we only have a limited supply at the moment. We have lots of wood because we have lots of trees on this map too, so I'm going to start by using wood doors and wood walls to finish off this room. We can make it look better later. Right now it's about getting them somewhere to put their head down for the night. Now to, to do that we may need some extra wood so we'll also go to orders and chop wood and mark a few trees here to chop down and we're also going to need a little bit of steel later on so we're going to get that marked now too. This is compacted plastic. We, we don't need this till later on and it takes ages to mine, so leave that for now. The only, only one you'll need for now is this compacted steel and that's a lot quicker to mine. So we're going to mark a little bit of that so that when we need it, we have it available. We're going to tell them to go. Uh, now some of their work priorities are going to be a little weirdly set, so we're going to check those out. Oh, first thing we're going to do, see these items on the ground here that arrive with them? They have red X's on them, which means they may not necessarily interact with them properly until you take them off and say that they can. They won't move them to storage yards either with these, uh, with these red X's on them, so I'm just going to take those off so that they use them as a resource as soon as they need them. Next thing we're going to check out their work priorities. So right, I'm going to pause while we do this, as this is quite a big screen. Right now we have three people, and this screen will work fine, and if you're happy with this screen, then run with it. Green tick means they will do the job, uh, empty box means they won't, no box means they can't, or one of their traits stops them from, from performing that function. Now in this case, uh, the green ticks work fine for most people. I tend to like manual priorities because I'm used to the game and I like a little bit more fine-tuned control. Manual priorities allow you to set a priority from 1 to 4 
per item, one being highest priority, four being lowest. They will complete all of their highest priority tasks if there is work needed doing in those tasks first and then go down through the numbers. Uh, if there is a fire in my home area, I only have one firefighter, I would like them to put it out. If they are sick, I would like them to go heal. If the doctor is needed, I want them on call immediately. If they need bed rest, I want bed rest. Flick switches is something that doesn't happen often, but it's not rocket scientists. Science, whoever is closest can go and do it. Other than that, this is my cook, so I'm going to make them priority on cooking. Uh, the herb is my growing person, so I'm going to make them priority on plant growing. And they're actually pretty good at construction too. Uh, you're going to be hunt and construction and mining. Okay, and then the rest of the tasks I'll complete as necessary. Now, I should be able to see the home area now. Uh, if we go to expand home area. So this area, because we now own this building, it's marked this as the home area. And that's what I s meant when I said if there's a fire in the home area. they will. This is the area they will clean, they will haul, they will put out fires, they will repair items, things like that inside the home area. You can expand that yourself and add areas or remove areas from that as well. So that's that done. Now we need to put some beds in. So under architect furniture, there are sleeping spots. These are the, are the cheapest uh, versions of a bed. They are literally a chalk outline with a chalk pillow drawn on it and their name written on the spot. So we're going to put in some of those and we're also going to put in an animal one just so the animal doesn't have to sleep outside. Now on top of this I'm also going to request some wooden beds be made. They may not complete these before the end of the day but if they do they'll get a good bed to, a better bed to sleep in tonight. If they don't, they have the sleeping spots as backup. While they're working on that, we're going to start looking into storage. So everything needs to be stored. We'll probably move these storage areas later, but to start with we just need some, some areas. So this, this first one is a stockpile zone, which is under zone area and then stockpile zone. And this will store everything like your wood, your uh, metals, your uh, components, your medicines, your food, everything that you produce or harvest. Uh, now the next zone is going to be a dumping zone. This is everything that you'll actually use some of these items later but right now they're not that useful to you. Things like stone, uh, when we build rooms here these, they'll clear these items out or when we put fields they'll put some of the stone things up in that uh, that storage area. Dead bodies, uh, bones, thing, things that were uh, slag, things that we're not going to need right now. The next zone we're going to talk about is growing zone. Now this is your plants and I'm going to make fairly sizable ones. You don't have to make them this big. I'm catering for later on. So, uh, And I have a good plant grower so they should be able to keep up. So the first one is going to be a 10 by 10 and that's going to be my staple which defaults to plant uh, potatoes and that's going to be my staple vegetable food. The next growing zone is actually going to be strawberries if we have high enough skill. just to give some variety. Now they grow quickly, uh, they do spoil quickly too though, but we'll deal with how to stop spoiling later. Now a plant person is already out planting, they will have to harvest and cut all these bushes out, trees out, move these stones off these growing areas to make them work. You can see they're, they're hauling things away. They actually managed to get some berries off the bushes that existed in here before, before moving them. I'm going to mark a little bit more wood for chopping as we've got another room to build for our crafting area. And actually we can chop down the trees that are going to be in our crafting area. Uh, structure, we're going to add some walls here. Ooh. 
Now you can make fairly large rooms. I think it's 11 by 11. Uh, someone can make a comment in chat if that's correct uh, before the centre will start to collapse. And your people can be hurt by the by roofs collapsing in on themselves. However, you can go thinner and longer. Just be careful not going too, too wide in both directions without support struts. Uh, it, it can uh, can kill people instantly. Don't forget to put doors in your structure. Your people are not smart enough to not lock them, not wall themselves in to an area. And the last thing we're going to ask them to create in here, when they get finished with that lot, is we're going to build a fuel stove. Now there is an electric stove, but and I will put in one of those later, but I tend to like having a backup fuel stove around. That means they can put a log of wood in the stove and cook meals. But under certain things, even if you have electricity set up, under certain events on the map, you may not be able to use your electricity. So being able to continually cook meals is, uh, is a base requirement for me at least anyway. I, I like having the backup there. The other one we're going to build is the butcher's table. And again, you can change the material these are build out, built out of, just like the walls, if you wish. Now we're going to let them get on with all those tasks. We'll speed it up a little while they get going. Now the speed up buttons are down here on the right. Pause and unpause will return it to the speed you had it before you toggle the pause off. So just be careful of that. Now when it comes to food, this isn't actually the first level of food. The first level of food, I've skipped it, I, I tend to, is the nutrient paste dispenser. Not only is it massive, you then put hoppers next to it for the food to go into and it spits out paste, which makes them mildly happier than eating raw food. So I tend to let them eat berries and if I have a good cook, they can wait for proper meals to be prepared. So <clears throat> in this case we are going straight for cooking and we are bypassing nutrient paste dispenser. You can build one if you wish. It's just I, I tend to find that it's quick enough to get cooking, especially now that there's the fuel stove, that we don't necessarily need to do that step. The fuel stove is up and running, so it won't do anything until you give it a bill. So we're gonna go into here and we're gonna go into add bill. Now there is simple meals, fine meals and lavish meals. Fine and lavish are not needed now. They're a later game thing once you have plenty of supplies and you want to give your people a mood boost by giving them a more fancy meal. Simple meals is all they need to survive. So we're going to go into simple meals and we're going to go into details. You can configure it he here at the outside but we're going to uh, do it in the big screen just so you can see what's going on. The first thing I do on these kind of meals is I want them to continually produce and keep maintaining a supply stock for my people. So I'm going to do, do do until you have and I'm going to increase it by just say 25 and my cook will continue to produce this item until it has that amount in the stockpile as long as the ingredients are available to produce it. Now speaking of the ingredients, this is one of the few meals that can be produced with just vegetarian ingredients, so you can turn meat off. Wargs prefer uh, real meat, so uh, or other animals do as well. You also use meat in kibble, you also use meat in the other two fancier kind of meals. So if you're limited on meat and you want to save it for those other things, you can turn it off here and just have vegetarian. However, we're going to do some hunting and we, we, this map has plenty of animals on it, uh, as well as we'll probably start a farm later. So for now, I'm gonna leave meat on. We can always come and turn it off later. I do usually turn off allow rotten, as there's less chance of food poisoning uh, if they don't include rotten ingredients. And that's it, that one's ready to go. Once our cook is ready to start cooking, they will hit to get that done. Now we're going to look for some things to hunt as well, so we can see that side of it. 
There's a chinchilla. I don't really want to hunt these guys as I might tame them and farm them later. Don't hunt boomalopes near your base. Um, and ideally hunt them in the rainy season as when they die they explode into a big fireball. So not only can you lose the meat that was inside them if they die, uh, you will also uh, create massive fires that can actually sweep across your map and wipe everything out if you're not careful. They will tend to hunt from the furthest distance possible and people will tend to walk in front of people shooting so uh, don't be too surprised if people get injured a lot. For now it's put those into the dumping stockpile because we haven't told them what to do with it. Hopefully she's working on the butcher table, yes. You can see the progress bar as she's building, the little grey squares that are filling in show you how much further until the job is done. For hunting you just select whatever animal it is and mark it for hunt. And as long as you have a hunter assigned to a work job, then when they're free they'll go and hunt the animals that you've marked. Be careful with some of them, they will attack back. So the butcher table is now built. Again, like the kitchen table, uh, the, the oven, we won't, it won't do anything until you give it a job. You can also make the kibble for animals here that will eat kibble, which is part meat, part vegetable or grain. And you can, but at the moment we're gonna butcher creatures. So you select butcher creatures and go to the details. At the moment human corpses are off because this is such a lush land with so many animals. I don't think we're going to need to eat the populace. However, we are going to set it to do forever. If I've hunted meat and it's sitting in the stockpile, then I would like them to prepare it as soon as they can to save spoilage and to get the most out of the meat that's available. So we're going to set that running. And when Dr. Cook is done. Now for butchering creatures, we'll wait until he puts this down. You don't right click on the creature and say butcher. If there is a creature to be butchered, you actually, if they're not doing it and you want, want them to hurry up and do it, see he's picked cooking another meal. So we're going to tell him, you can see that down on the left, we're going to right click the butcher table and prioritise butchering. And he will actually change his task. Now he knows he needs to clear the butcher's table first. What she's doing, she's putting up the roof in here. He's putting up the roof in here. Now he's off to get, now Dr. Cook is off to get the animal in question and we'll take it down to the butcher table to be prepared. On top of getting meat from butchering, you also get leather which is a great advantage for hats and clothing and all sorts of wonderful things. There you go, you can see the leather that dropped on the floor, alpaca hide, and they're taking the meat, prepared meat, back to the stockpile, which they can then use in cooking. And that is the basics of your starter rooms, your cooking, your butchering, and your growing zones. Uh, for food.